are certain recommended procedures that I would like to suggest at the very beginning when you come up against what looks like a discrepancy uh, in the scripture. First of all, you need to be fully persuaded in your mind that there is an adequate explanation, even though you don't know yet what it is. The aerodynamic engineer may not understand how it is that a bumblebee could fly because its wings seem to be too small to carry all of that weight. Yet he sees him fly, and so he has to trust that there must be an explanation for its fine performance. Even so, we may have complete confidence that the divine author of Scripture preserved the human author of each book from error or mistake as he wrote down the original manuscript of the sacred text what is technically known as the autograph, which is a little different from signing their name on somebody's Bible flyleaf. Secondly, avoid the fallacy of shifting from one a priori to another, to, to its opposite, every time a problem arises. For the Bible either is the inerrant word of God or it is the imperfect record of fallible men. And once we have come to the insight and agree with Jesus that the scripture is completely trustworthy and authoritative, then it's hardly uh, pertinent for us to shift over to the other assumption that the Bible is uh, does contain errors and therefore must be subjected to intelligent human judgment to weed out the mistakes from the truths. You see, unlike all other books known to man, the scriptures come to us from God. And in them we confront the ever-living, ever-present God. When we are unable to understand God's ways or comprehend his words, we must simply bow before him in humility and wait for him to clear up the difficulty or to deliver us from our trial if we are in a situation that is critical. Thirdly, uh, carefully study the context and framework of the verse in which the problem arises until you get some clear idea of what the passage is intended to mean within its own setting. It may be necessary to study the entire book in which the passage occurs. Carefully note how it is, uh, how the key term is used in other passages. Compare scripture with scripture, especially all those passages in other parts of the Bible that deal with the same subject or doctrine. Fourthly, Remember that no interpretation of Scripture is valid that is not based on careful exegesis. Now, exegesis is the science of eliciting the full meaning of the author from the words that he used within an understanding of the grammar and the uh, lexicography that is involved. Now, you have to use and be able to employ uh, good dictionaries in Hebrew and Greek, and uh, you have to study parallel passages. Now, for, to give you a uh, familiar type of example, suppose you're a foreigner and you have come to America and uh, you're trying to learn the English language. You look up in the dictionary and you find the word strike has a, a variety of meanings but uh, perhaps it would still be confusing to you if you were to read in the newspaper, the prospectors made a strike yesterday up in the mountains. And then on another column you read, the union went on strike this morning. And then perhaps in another page, the batter made his third strike and was called out by the umpire. And then uh, when it comes to the performance of a, uh, of a band, it says strike up this, with a star spangled banner. Or the fisherman got a good strike in the middle of the lake. 
Now, presumably, each of these uh, completely different uses of the same word go back to some uh, parent meaning and would have a definite etymology. But a complete confusion may result from misunderstanding how the speaker meant the word to be used. I remember there was a dear lady from uh, uh, Hong Kong who said, I thought I knew something about the English language when I came to this country. And uh, I heard about, I saw a dog. Yeah, a dog, that's a little animal that has uh, four legs and a waggly tail. But then uh, uh, I heard that uh, some people were saying that their dogs were tired and they didn't even have a dog with them. And then uh, there was uh, quite a bit of uh, bad weather that came along and uh, I was told that it was raining cats and dogs, but I didn't see any. And then there was this lady that went around with uh, uh, very fancy clothing and I was told that she was putting on the dog, but I didn't see any dog. Well, you see, what you have to do is learn to understand what people mean by the language which they used rather than what you would infer from your knowledge of the terminology. Uh, then, in the case of parallel passages, and, uh, you know, we do have uh, parallel passages, uh, for example, between the books of uh, Samuel and uh, Kings and Chronicles, the only method that can be justified is um, harmonization. That is to say, all the testimonies of the various witnesses are to be taken as trustworthy reports of what was said and done in their presence, even though they may have viewed the transaction from a slightly different perspective. When we sort them out, line them up, put them together, we can gain a fuller understanding of what really happened than we would have from the testimony of a single witness. Uh, but uh, as with any properly conducted inquiry in a court of law, the judge and the jury are expected to receive each witness's testimony as true when viewed from his own perspective, unless, of course, he is exposed as a liar. And uh, his testimony uh, should be corroborated from outside sources. Uh, now, the sixth caution is to consult the best commentaries available, especially those written by evangelical scholars who understand the Bible to be the word of God rather than the fallible word of man. And a good 90% of problems will be dealt with in good commentaries, good Bible dictionaries, and good uh, Bible encyclopedias serve to clear up many perplexities and an analytical concordance will help establish word usage, such as Strong's and Young's concordances. Uh, in the seventh place, many Bible difficulties result from a minor error on the part of a copyist in the transmission of the text. In the Old Testament, such uh, transmissional errors may have resulted from an incorrect reading of similar appearing consonants. Hebrew was originally written in consonants only, and the vowel signs were not added until a thousand years later after the completion of the Old Testament canon. But there are also some consonants that are easily confused because they look so much alike. For example, the uh, letter for D is like this. It, uh, you have a stroke, a horizontal stroke, and then a vertical stroke, and a little hangover at the uh, uh, upper right corner. The letter for R looks rather similar, but you have actually a rounded corner. Uh, even to this day, when you read, hey, it's not coming through. All right, thank you. Uh, even to this day, when you read Israeli newspapers, you get the same problem. They will, uh, they they generally tend to use this, and they leave it to your intelligence to tell whether it's a D or an R. Of course, uh, they do 
uh, think up ways to make life hard in Israel, and this is one of them. Another uh, problem has to do with the similarity between a Y and a W. The Y is written like this. It's a, it's a vertical with a little curved thing at the top. Um, no, this is, this is the one that has a short, a short tail. So I'm trying to get this shortened up here. And uh, the W has a longer tail. But now the problem is that particularly during the time of the Dead Sea Scrolls, say uh, in the uh, second century BC, the, uh, the similarity was so great. Um, this then would be the typical Dead Sea Scroll uh, Y, and this would be the typical Dead Sea Scroll W. Well, you see, if the scribe was writing a little bit hastily, he might not have calculated to the correct millimeter the distinction between those two letters. And so um, we have to be alert to these factors in textual criticism. Uh, then in the eighth place, where historical accounts of the Bible are called in question on the basis of alleged disagreement with the findings of archaeology or the testimony of ancient non-Hebrew documents, we need to remember that the Bible itself is an archaeological document. The um, typical um, liberal seems to feel that if a thing is in the Bible, it is automatically suspect. It is uh, probably wrong unless it can be proven right from outside sources. And uh, we need to observe, as most informed archaeologists must admit, that pagan kings of uh, Babylon or Moab or Phoenicia or uh, any of the Mesopotamian countries uh, were in the habit of putting up self-laudatory propaganda just as their modern counterparts do. And it's incredibly naive to suppose that simply because a statement was written in Assyrian cuneiform or Egyptian hieroglyphics, it was more trustworthy and factual than the record in the Hebrew scripture. No other ancient document in the BC period affords so many clear proofs of accuracy and integrity as the Old Testament does. So it is a violation of the rules of evidence to assume that the Bible uh, statement is wrong every time it disagrees with a, um, an inference from a pagan document. 